Okay, so um, for this test that's coming up, you are going to have primarily Chapter 5 material, but there's a couple of lessons from Chapter 6, and I want to do these problems from your review sheet. Obviously, I'm having to do a separate video. Uh, let's get started. We'll finish off the review sheet, um, starting with number 19. So on the test, you should be ready to graph uh, either exponential decay, which is what number 19 is, and also exponential growth, which is number 20. But here's the process. Um, you'll first make a table using what we call just the base. Uh, this would be a parent table. Just the base of the exponent by itself. Um, remove everything else. And uh, when you make your table for that parent, the inputs will always be the same for everybody. You'll input those five numbers. And so one third to the zero power is one. One third to the first power is one third. One third to the second is one ninth. One third to the negative one power is three. And one third to the negative two power is nine. From there, we're going to progress to another table to show the impact of multiplying by negative 2. So I'll call this table times negative 2. And when you multiply negative 2 times a parent, it's, tr it's always true, no matter what the parent is, it only impacts the y coordinate of the parent. So for this next table, I'm just going to rewrite these x-coordinates. X but each of the y-coordinates, I will multiply individually by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2, 1 third times negative 2, 1 ninth times negative 2, 3 times negative 2, and 9 times negative 2. All right, and then finally, we'll take care of any shifting, fancy word, technical word is translations. And we only have one shift that's happening according to the exponent. We're adding 2 to x, so that means we're actually moving left 2. So this final table will show what it does to the previous table. Okay, so once you go from one table to the next, you work on that last table to get to the next table. So left 2 means that for each of the x coordinates on this previous table, I'm going to subtract 2 from each one. So 0 minus 2, 1 minus 2, 2 minus 2, negative 1 minus 2, and negative 2 minus 2. And since I didn't move any vertically from the parent, then these y-coordinates are not going to change. I'll just rewrite them. That ends up being the table that will be plotted, and we'll connect those points, and it'll represent our graph. Okay, so let's plot negative 2, negative 2 negative 1, negative 2 thirds, just a little bit above negative 1. 0, negative 2 ninths is just a little bit above that on the y-axis. And then negative 3, negative 6. And negative 4, negative 18, uh, you don't have to worry about changing the scale of your axes. To make that fit just you can just as long as you got your table I'll, I'll know what that means i can match it up with what you have there on your table so uh, i'll do my best you should be approaching but technically never touching the x-axis and then the other part of this the other end is heading toward y approaching negative infinity okay so there's the graph so we've done part A. Part B is uh, identify the graph as exponential growth or decay. And you'll tell that by looking, just look at the number that's directly below the exponent, below the x. And if it's a number between 0 and 1, it's decay. And so we have exponential decay in this particular case. 
letter C, uh, the domain is going to be all real numbers for both of these problems. The range, however, will differ. Um, the range is, in this case is going to be all the Y values that are less than zero because it's going down forever from zero but never touching zero. And then finally, I'll come over here. The horizontal asymptote is the line that our graph will forever approach but never touch. And in this case, that's the x-axis, but in equation form, that's the line y equals zero. All right, so that takes care of number 19. Now let's run through number 20. Uh, start with your parent table. In this case, it'll be 2 to the x power. Same inputs, 0, 1, 1 would give you 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. And now let's show the impact of multiplying by 3. And again, that only, that only affects the y coordinates from this previous table, so the x's can just be rewritten but each y will be multiplied by 3. So 1 times 3, 2 times 3, 4 times 3, 1 half times 3, and 1 fourth times 3. And now we'll take care of the shifts. In this case, there are two. According to the numerator, we're going right 1. And then according to this other number, we're going up 2. And so in table math, to accomplish right one, I go to this, again, I'm done with this first table. It has been replaced. So now for this uh, previous table to go right one, I just add one to each of the x's. So zero plus one, one plus one, two plus one, negative one plus one, negative two plus one. And then to show up two, I add 2 to each of the y's. So 3 plus 2, 6 plus 2, 12 plus 2, uh, 3 halves plus 2. You could think of uh, 2 as 4 halves. 3 halves plus 4 halves is 7 halves. And 3 fourths plus 2. So again, just think of 2 as 8 fourths, and that would be 11 fourths. And there is your table that needs to be plotted and connected. So 1, 5 is there. 2, 8 is there. 3, 14 is off my graph. I'll just put a point up here to represent that. 0, 3, and 7 halves is 3 and a half. So that would be right there in between 3 and 4. And in negative 1, uh, 11 fourths is 2 and 3 fourths. We'll estimate that to be right there. So this time, since we shifted 2 up, um, I'm not saying that this is really required, but it's a good reminder. Shifting 2 up changes our horizontal asymptote. So now, this graph should be approaching y equals 2, but technically it's never going to actually touch it. So there's your graph, and now uh, identify it as growth or decay. Well, the number underneath the exponent is greater than 1, so that means we have to have growth. Uh, domain and range, uh, all reals for the domain. The range is going to be the y's that are greater than 2. You can always tell the range by how you shifted up or down and whether the graph is reflected or not. And then finally, uh, the horizontal asymptote, we basically already identified it with this dotted line, but that's the line y equals 2. All right, so there's uh, 19 and 20. 21 and 22 will uh, review your ability to write exponential functions. And just remember that 
exponential functions always uh, look like this in general form. So start here and then plug in uh, the information given in the problem. So A in this exponential form represents the starting value of the item, the object. In this case, the car started off being valued at 32500 Depreciates is another word for decay. All right, so for decay, to get the what we call the decay factor, which is what B is, you start with one, but then you subtract whatever the rate of the annual rate of decay in this case is, and that's 0.06. So one minus 0.06 is 0.94. And then the X represents how much time has passed uh, to how much, how many years have passed in this particular case, and it's five years. So you go to your calculator now and you key that in, 32,500, left parentheses 0.94, close parentheses, and then raise that to the fifth power and you can just round these to the nearest dollar, uh, these problems, and that's 23,852. That's how much the car is worth after five years at that rate of decay. All right, number 22 is gonna be a growth problem. So it's the same template a still means the initial value of, in this case, the baseball card. But B, since it's growth, we're going to start with one and add a rate, percentage rate of growth, which is 0.03 in decimal form. So 1 plus 0.03 is 1.03. And again, it's these are both based on five years. So you raise that to the fifth power and 50 left parentheses 1.03 close parentheses raised to the fifth and to the nearest dollar that would be 58 dollars all right <clears throat> number 23 is uh, material from lesson 6-2 and this is uh, using the common base method meaning that these two bases, 8 and 16, had to be rewritten so that they're the same. They, it's a base that has to equal 8 and equal 16. A base of 2 will do that because 2 to the 3rd is 8 and 2 to the 4th is 16. So my common base in this particular problem is going to be 2. And then once you get common bases, just think the left exponent after distributing equals the right exponent after distributing. And now you just solve for x like you have many times in the past. Subtract 3x, subtract 12, and divide by 5, and your answer will be negative 9 fifths. Okay, same thing on number 24. I'm trying to think of a number that I could use as a base to represent 8. Well, I know that's 2 to the 3rd. And that same number 2 has to be used to write 256. And I believe that's 2 to the 8th. Yep, so 2 to the 8th power. And now you've got the common bases established. You just left the left exponent, which is going to be 9 minus 9y, equal the right exponent, which is going to be 32y. So I'm going to add 9y to both sides and then divide by 41. And there's our answer for number 24. All right, on 25, I gave you instruction in class. You can just change this uh, so that uh, you can just write down the rate of growth. is 2%. So when you have this problem on your test, it will this will be provided. 
So uh, here's another exponential growth. All right, so the population started at 1,320 or 1,321,045. And since the percentage rate of growth is 2%, that means the growth factor is going to be 1.02. It's always 1 plus for growth, and it would be 1 minus a percentage for decay. So letter A just wants a function. Uh, write an exponential function that could be used to show the, mo the population of Phoenix. X is in terms of how many years have passed since the year 2000. So that would be your answer for letter A, and then letter B, you're just going to use that equation function to get specific. Then what would the population be in Phoenix after essentially 25 years? So it's 25 years from 2000 to 2025. So just take your previously written function. It's just that in letter B, you're going to replace X with 25. And go to your calculator. One three one two one zero oh, four five. Left parentheses one point oh two. Close parentheses raised to the twenty fifth power. And uh, for people, please don't give me decimals. You can just round. So two one five two six four six five. Uh, two million one hundred uh, twenty one million sorry twenty one million five hundred twenty six thousand four hundred and sixty five and I just noticed sorry uh, I switched couple of numbers around here. It should be 1321045 and I said 1312. So let me fix that. So it matches your answer sheet. And let me go back to the calculator and put that in the right way this time. All right. 1321. Boy, I just... One three two one zero oh, four five. Okay, I got it. One three two one zero oh, four five. Left parentheses. One point zero oh, two raised to the twenty fifth power. Okay, I think we got it. Two one six seven three one four. And um, that is millions. And again, with people, uh, make sure you round to the nearest whole number. No decimals. All right, um, one more problem that's a compound interest problem. Here is your compound interest formula that you need to be familiar with for the test. All right, uh, we invested $8,000, that's P, at an annual interest rate of 4.5%, that's 0 0.045 as a decimal. Compounded quarterly, and that means four times a year, so N is going to be four, four quarters in a year. And then the exponent is going to be N, which again is four, times T, which is the number of years, which is seven. So in your calculator, uh, 8,000 one, uh, left parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.045 divided by 4, close parentheses. And you could do raised to the 28th power. That would be perfectly all right. If you choose to do raised to the 4 times 7 power, you'll need, it's required that you put parentheses around 4 times 7. doesn't matter which way you do it, but if you're going to do the multiplication in the exponent, then please remember to put parentheses around the multiplication. All right, let's go to our calculator. 8,000 parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.045 divided by 4 raised to the 28th power. And these will be rounded to the nearest penny. 
It's two decimal places. $10,942.81. And that is your answer for number 26. That's our last problem. So uh, this is just like a part two covering just the chapter six material on the review sheet. If you have any questions as you're preparing for your test, let me know.